Hello and welcome. You've joined us on Business Lunch. I'm Nisha Podar and with me is Manglam Malu. Manglam, good afternoon. Market's looking weak today. In fact, Nifty 50, just a few minutes back, has really shed below the 11,000 mark. So about 100 points cut on Nifty and Sensex also die, down in the same tune. So it's a really bad showing right now, almost 1% down. A lot of that is really coming in from Tata Motors because of the JLR concerns after a weak set of numbers. And if you put together just Tata Motors as well, as Reliance Industries, which is also weak in the trading day to day, both put together are about 25 points of cut that Nifty 50 is already seeing. But um, surprise, surprise, it's Kotak Mahindra Bank that is really giving some bit of contribution in terms of uh, really holding on to these levels as far as Nifty 50 is concerned. And Bharti Infratel, and that is also a big surprise coming in, about 4.5% up in trades today, also adding a fair bit of support. As far as mid caps are concerned, those are really taking a deeper cut and therefore the advanced decline ratio and overall market breadth is also looking weak at this point, Mangla. Absolutely, the market's looking weak and if the director can quickly pull up the 11,000 put, that will tell you the importance of the 11,000 mark because up until today morning, 11,000 was the level where which both bulls and bears were putting in a fight. The maximum open interest was at the 11,000 both call as well as put and as the markets have fallen below the 11,000 put, there is some shedding in open interest at the 11,000 put. In just the last two trading sessions, close to 15 lakh shares were written by the bulls, believing that maybe 11,000 is a mark that the bulls can defend. And now with the ferocity with which the market's falling, which is why post the 11,000 mark, we've seen a sharp knock. Now we're at 10,950 because a lot of these puts are unwinding. Conversely, the 11,000 call, where the fight was between both bulls and bears, the 11,000 call, bulls are, uh, uh, rather bears are writing the 11,000 call, saying that maybe this is the mark that they can defend. will be very important to see how this goes about and how the close is because that will uh, decide the next course of action but as of now as we speak the fight between bulls and bears for 11,000 continues and currently it is advantage bears given the sort of ferocity with which we saw a decline but I believe Tata Motors is the top loser. Oh yes, uh, Manglam Tata Motors is the one which has uh, come off the low point of the day. 129 it had hit earlier in the day today, which was 52 week lows, but is still down over 18% as we talk and is the top nifty loser in trade today after their Q3 results really missed the mark on all parameters. GLR, that saw the third straight quarter of losses and the asset impairment cost was a hit on the net profit. Surbhi Upadhyay, our colleague, is right here to tell us what the brokerages are really making of this development. Survey. One big uh, price cut is coming from CLSA. Uh, they have retained their sell call. Their target is 150, which means that the, they're expecting the stock uh, to go back to its original 52-week low before uh, this morning's uh, price correction that we saw. What are they saying? Uh, the margin decline is a lot more than what they were expecting. Demand outlook has worsened both in India and, of course, in the big market. That's China. They've downgraded their EPS estimates uh, anywhere between 2 to 66% over the next couple of years. Uh, and they don't see any kind of near-term triggers. Let's move on. DB is a little more sanguine. They're retaining a hold rating, a target cut uh, to 175 rupees a share. Uh, and they're saying that the operating environment is likely to remain challenging in the near term. Uh, and they're looking at a EPS forecast cut of 38% in FY19 itself, another 10% next year. Access Capital. They have downgraded the stock to a hold. Their target is a little more elevated than the other two. 187 is where Access Capital is at. Uh, now, they're saying that the PL seems to be near a trough, but it's a question of how do you pick this and is this really the right time to look at buying? They say they will get constructive once uh, JLR volumes in China stabilize and once one of these, uh, a lot of these Brexit concerns are behind the company. Last but not the least, we've got Nomura also at 187. Uh, and they're saying that free cash flow generation is going to take a, a while longer. Market conditions are in China are likely to remain uh, quite rough. So they're uh, looking at lowering their EBIT margins on JLR, negative 0.3% this year to 3.6% over FY21. So JLR is not getting out of the doldrums anytime soon is the word. All right, JLR not getting out of the doldrums anytime soon. But let's hear out what PB Balaji, the group CFO of Tata Motors, had to say on JLR's performance this quarter. Jaguar Land Rover, the performance was impacted by corrective actions that you have taken in China, the weak market conditions there, and the production shutdown there. The revenue at 6.2 billion was down 1.4%, uh, and PAT at uh, minus 3.1 uh, 3 billion pounds basically got impacted by the uh, corrective actions that we did on uh, or taking an impairment on our assets there. 
taken an one time exceptional charge uh, for asset impairment this reduces the growth and depreciation and amortization rates by almost 300 million per annum going forward so it's a it's a right step that we have taken uh, in terms of uh, reducing our uh, costs improving our break evens and as well as uh, ensuring our competitiveness all right, tough times there continue for Tata Motors, still down over 18%. Another stock which is moving and is on our radar is India Bulls Housing Finance and is down close to about 5% on the back of the investment of 2,800 crore rupees worth of equity capital in its associate Oak North Bank by SoftBank. To discuss this, we had uh, ED uh, of the company Ajit Kumar Mittal earlier today and listen in to what he had to say about the dilution of India Bulls Housing finance stake in Oak North. Post dilution, our stake would be down to close to 15%. Mm -hmm. We were around 19% prior to this round of funding. Mm -hmm. And the bank is currently uh, uh, going simply by the price at which Oak North is picking up the stake. The bank would be valued at roughly 2 point, uh, upward of 2 billion pounds. So roughly, you can say 2.7, 2 2.8 uh, billion dollars all right that's in double housing finance well for the markets we're still lower so